super excited about March because we can now feel like there is some forward movement going on. Um, even, you know, for me personally, even before I got really, really in depth with my astrology, I always would say that um, March was my my new year, my personal new year. And I don't know why I felt that way. But as I started to get more into my astrology and my spirituality and everything, we find out that March is the astrological new year. Exactly March the 21st is the astrological new year. Um, and it starts uh, spring, officially starts. And it is the start of Aries season. And Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So Aries is all about forward movement. Uh, Aries is about the also the physical movement of your body and yourself. Uh, it's about your energy, your drive, your creativity, your passion, uh, your direction. So um, the, the day after my points drop, see, that's what I'm talking about. So um, and it starts off with spring. So. Even though the calendar new year is January the 1st, we are still in uh, January the 1st, we're still in Capricorn season and it's winter. It is what we consider the dead season. Um, that is when I feel like January and February, we are still kind of uh, cleaning up from the previous year. We're still trying to uh, maybe settle some things that uh, we needed to settle from the previous year, and we're still in the planning phases of the upcoming year. <laughs> um, so March gives us that fresh new beginning, that springtime when things are starting to bloom, uh, things are starting to be green, the weather is good, you're feeling refreshed, you're feeling renewed, and uh, that's when we start the astrological new year on March the 21st. So I'm excited about it. And I have been talking about March for quite some time because we have a lot of movement astrologically in March that's going to impact everyone. And um, it's just going to be great. So we're going to be talking about um, how March is going to affect us uh, on an individual level and also a little bit on a collective level, level because there is a... Uh, an astrological event that's coming up this month that is going to affect us collectively, not just for us individually, but individually also, but more for the masses. And we're going to see how that's already starting to play out. And we're going to see how that that uh, plays out for everyone. So, so March, the, let's start off at the beginning. March the 2nd, um, the planet Mercury is going to go into the sign of Pisces. So, you know, Mercury is the planet of communication. It's how we speak. It's how we interpret information. It's how we, we uh, learn, process information, exchange information. Um, it's the planet of uh, moving parts. It's the planet of transportation. So when Mercury is moving into the sign of Pisces, um, Mercury is all about the details. So Mercury wants to know how everything works and getting down to the details um, and the information parts of it. Pisces is the sign of illusion and sometimes of confusion and delusion. So Pisces is like really doesn't have a lot of details, if it any. So when Mercury goes into Pisces, it's not really functioning like it would normally like to function because Pisces is kind of like more of an intuitive type of sign. They go on how they feel about something. So Mercury is like, I need details. And Pisces is like, well, I don't have details. And I, you know, I just go on what I feel. So with it going into uh, Pisces on March the 2nd to stay there for about 30 days, we have to be really, really careful about um, the things that we say, the things that we communicate, um, the things that we promise or we commit to uh, may not be clear. We also need to be really, really careful about um, how we are interpreting information, especially something that's said to us in, in communication to us and how it is being said and what we are understanding maybe two different things during this month of March. So really be careful about um, 
the exchange of information. Um, if you need to write something down, write it down. If you need to rehearse what you're trying to say, because um, the message may get lost in the details during this time. So we just want to be careful with our communications, you know, during the month of March. Um, March the 7th, we're going to have a full moon in the sign of Virgo. So we know full moons are all about endings, adjustments, acknowledgements. Full moons are also about the discovery of information because this is when the moon is at its brightest. And this is where we have certain things revealed to us. So we're going to have a full moon in the sign of Virgo on March the 7th. I'm going to be talking about how that's going to impact uh, everyone. The next is going to be whoo, the first thing that, we, that I'm excited about on that same day, March the 7th, is Saturn going into the sign of Pisces. Now, this is um, one of the longer transits that I've been talking about. So Saturn stays in a sign for about two and a half to three years, just kind of uh, depending on its rotation and its retrograde. So it has been um, in the sign of Aquarius for the last two and a half years or so. So it is about to leave uh, Aquarius and it's going to move into sign of Pisces and it will be doing that on March the 7th. However, a lot of you probably are feeling this, especially if you kind of know your own birth chart uh, energetically. And I always tell you when a planet is about to uh, leave a house or leave a sign right at the end is where it's it's most impactful. So it, especially with Saturn, Saturn is that planet of um, uh, restriction, duty. Uh, it's the planet of uh, lessons. It's the planet of doing things in order. Plan um, when Saturn comes into a house or comes into a sign, it's there to um, make things more efficient. So it's there to cut through all the bullshit and get down to business so we can figure out how we are going to build a foundation in this area of your life. So Saturn is one of those planets that um, it does require you to do the work. It will have you in circumstances that challenge you a lot. Um, to try to see what you're built in, uh, of and um, try to get you to the best position that you can be in in this particular area of your life. But like I was saying, when a planet is leaving a sign or leaving a house, it is its most potent, uh, especially with Saturn, because Saturn does not reward. Saturn is a, it will reward you at the end of the lesson. So Saturn wants to make sure that you have gotten the lesson. So Saturn may throw out uh, a challenge for you and may throw out a lesson for you just to try to see if you really got it. But at the end of the transit, it does reward you. Um, me being a Leo rising, I will tell you that Saturn has been in my seventh house of relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships for the last two and a half years. So my one-on-one -on -one relationships have, my lessons have been around how to do one-on-one -on -one relationships in a healthy way. And baby, it's been, ugh, ugh, Lord have mercy. It's been a lot of lessons learned. So at the end of the cycle, I'm anticipating a reward from that. And it could look like anything. It could look like a relationship coming into my life that's going to be there for a long time. It could look like you know, me just really learning how to do healthy relationships one on one, whatever that looks like. But on March the 7th, Saturn is going to go into Pisces and it's going to be highlighting a different area of your life. And this is where you're going to have a lot of tests, um, a lot of lessons, a lot of work to be done. So just look, look forward to that. Um, now, if you want to learn about that, that is going to be done in a personal reading because we will not be talking about that tonight because that is a very long transit that lasts about three years. So honestly, if you haven't had a reading with me or any other astrologer, um, if you've never had one or if it's been a, long, a while since you had one, I would strongly suggest that you have one now because we are entering into some great energy that you want to utilize um, in order to set yourself up for the next few years. So March the 12th, uh, Jupiter is going to be conjuncting Chiron. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on that one because that's all about our healing. 
in certain areas of your life. So I think that is important as we're moving into this new year. So I'll do a different live for that. Mars the 16th, Venus, the planet of love, the planet of money, harmony, things that, you know, our material possessions, things that make us feel good. It's going to be changing signs. It's going to be leaving the sign of Aries, going into the sign of Taurus, where it is at home. So this is Venus <laughs> rules Taurus. So anytime you have a planet going into its ruling sign, it's operating in its maximum potential. So it's going to be going there uh, on March the 16th. Um, March the 19th, Mercury is going to leave out of Pisces. It's going to go into Aries. It's much more comfortable in the sign of Aries. And this is where our thoughts, our ideas, things that we want to do, our 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 mental, all of this is going to get like really in overdrive. So all those ideas, all those projects, all those things that you've been wanting to do, you are going to now be able to figure out how I can do this, how I can make this happen. So you're going to feel a burst of energy around your intellect and how you're communicating, um, being very assertive in your communications and what you want to see happen. So you'll feel the shift of the energy around communication for you change. March the 20th, um, happy um, astrological new year because the sun is going to enter into the sign of Aries. So we're going to have our new beginnings right there. March the 21st, we then have a new moon in the sign of Aries. So new moons are all about... Fresh new beginnings. It's all about us planting our seeds of intention. It's all about us starting new projects, um, new relationships, whatever the newness around your life. This is the energy that you're going to start it with. Uh, keep in mind, Aries is an entrepreneurial sign. It's the sign of the entrepreneur. So this would be a great time for those of you that are wanting to launch a business or a project or something to that nature. March the 21st will be a great time to birth that thing. Um, March 23rd, this is another impactful one. Pluto is going to change signs. It's going to leave the sign of Capricorn. Now, Pluto has been in Capricorn for the last 15 to 20 years. I think more like 20 years. So it's been there a long time. So you can imagine if it's been in Capricorn for 20 years and it's about to change on March the 23rd, that is going to be something very, very monumental, okay? So it's going to be moving into the sign of Aquarius. Now, keep in mind, it's only going to be there for a couple of months, okay? So I think until June, if I'm not mistaken. I think until early June. So it's only going to be there a few months. However, this little window with Pluto going into Aquarius, pay attention. This is why it's important for you to get a reading because this little window is going to give you an indicator of what you can anticipate from this Pluto in Aquarius energy when it officially moves into Aquarius in 20, January 2024. It's going to let you know what you're going to be transforming, uh, what area of your life is going to be going through a major transformation from 2024 to 2044, a very, very long transit. So, um, again, um, I think I'm going to, I might do a separate video on that one. But this is, again, another reason why you need to get a reading because you need to find out what area of your life is about to go through a major transformation. We are talking about a total transformation. Pluto is the planet of transformation. It's the planet of power. It's the planet of evolution, death and rebirth, literally and figuratively. So this is an area, this is a planet that represents the dying off of certain things in your life. Now, could this mean an actual death? Absolutely. Uh, I always say that I am a, not a, an astrologer that does death predictions. Uh, I, I leave that up to God. They don't have anything to do with me. I'm not going to play with that. But... It could, but it could also symbolize something dying off in your life. Maybe a bad habit, maybe a relationship, uh, maybe a job, maybe a self-sabotaging behavior. But it is in an effort for you to be reborn in a different way. So this transit is very, very impactful. I'm excited about it.
I'm definitely excited about it. So that's March the 23rd. And then finally, March the 25th, we have Mars going into the sign of Cancer. Now, this is a big deal. And I normally don't talk about Mars because Mars is like a fast moving energy and it stays in a, in a sign anywhere from 30, no more, no more than 60 days. But Mars has been in Gemini for the last seven months. So that's a very, very long time for Mars to be in a particular sign. And now it's moving out of Gemini finally, and it's moving into the sign of Cancer. Now, Mars doesn't necessarily like to be in Cancer because Mars is the planet of forward movement, of drive. Let's get it done. Let's, you know, all of that. It's aggression. It's action. And Cancer is the sign of, and well, I'm a Cancer sun. So it's all about the emotion. Uh, it's all about the staying at home, you know, you know, cancer rules home. So Mars is like, I'm trying to get out there and be outside and cancer is like, no, I just want to be in and I want to eat ice cream and I just want to chill at home. So Mars is not really comfortable. What happens is the sign, the planet has to get on board with what the sign is and it has to operate the way the sign is. So my interpretation of Mars and cancer is all about you resting and even though i told you this is a month that's going to kick off a lot of energy and it is um i would say to you pace yourself cancer is telling mars you don't have to do everything at one time pace yourself so it's not necessarily a full stop it's just like a slowdown because what mars will have you do is mars is a starter planet so you're great with starting but you don't necessarily, you don't do well on the finishing up. So Cancer is like, well, let's just pace ourselves and let's take our time. And then once you get to get out of my sign and go into Leo, you can go full force. Okay. Um, and then Mars and Cancer sometimes um, interrupts sleep. Some of you may have an experience of having trouble sleeping, especially my Leo sun, moon and risings. This may interfere with your sleep. Uh, so try to get as much as rest as possible. Okay, those are the major transits that I feel like are outlined for the month of March. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, there's my heart. That's all I needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start at the top of the zodiac like we always do. I wonder if my niece is on here. She's always complaining that her rising sign is at the end, but I can't help that. Not my fault. Um so, uh, again, listen for your rising sign first. I oh, thank you, Ashley. Your rising sign first, your sun sign second, and then your moon sign third. So you can get a full overview on what could be coming up for you for the month of March. So let's talk to the zodiac. Aries, rising, sun, or moon. So we're going to be talking about where the sun is, where Venus is, and where your new and full moon are going to be for the month of March. Aries, rising, sun, or moon. Uh, the sun, the first three weeks of March is going to be impacting the area that governs uh, your 12th house. I'm missing something around here. Your 12th house. I think somebody been in my damn office and you know how I feel about that shit. Hold on. It pisses me off. Okay, your 12th house. So... This is going to have a lot of your energy, your attention, your vitality uh, focused on things behind the scenes. So this could look like um, you getting in touch with your spirituality, um, you getting in touch with your ancestors, you getting in touch with uh, things that have everything to do with your spiritual life. Because the 12th house is going to be lit up for you and your spiritual life is here. So this is also about um, energy around you taking care of yourself. This is what I consider the self-care house. So for my Aries rising sun or moon, this is going to be a great month for you to do a lot of self-care and a lot of healing work on yourself. Uh, another thing that we talk about in the 12th house is when we talk about healing, um, this has to do with your addictions. This has to do with traumas, hurts. Anything that of that nature that you are dealing with, holding on to, especially those self-sabotaging behaviors, this is going to be a month whereas you can definitely put a lot of effort into healing yourself around those areas. Now, this could also look like 
past traumas could come up in some form uh, in an effort for you to address them and heal them finally. This could also look like um, a great time for you to do a, a vacation or a retreat of some sort. So if you can get away and maybe do like some type of healing retreat, even if you just can't vacation, maybe you can go to a spa or something to that effect. Anything that helps you connect with yourself and that helps you connect with your higher power, your higher self uh, in an effort to heal yourself, bring peace and calm to your inner being. Um, this also is the area that governs specialized populations. So this looks like hospitals, rehab centers, prisons, places where we're confined. Now, this could be you having a hospital stay or dealing with things that have to do with a hospital. Um, maybe you or someone close to you is going into the hospital or having some type of medical procedure. Um, maybe there's a, a visit to a rehab center of some sort. Again, a self-care center or a retreat center. Maybe you or someone close to you. Now, this is also the area that governs prisons and jails. Listen. I don't really judge about people in there, whether they got situations going on with the law or anything, but this could direct your attention to um, someone in a confined situation, a prison, a jail, contending with a legal situation that could potentially take someone away from you. Um, could be, could not be. But those are the things that could come up for you in the month of March where they will have your attention. But I want my Aries Risings to do a lot of loving and caring for themselves. This is a great time to consider going to therapy, back to therapy, whatever therapy looks like for you. Um, your Venus is going to be in your second house. Now, remember, Venus is uh, the, the smallest benefic planet. But Venus is all about the attraction. So Venus wants to attract things to us. So a lot of times when Venus is in a certain area of our, our charts, we don't have to do a lot of work with Venus because Venus is like, sit back and let me bring you the blessings. So for Aries rising, this is going to be in your second house. And I always say this is like my favorite placement for Jupiter and Venus because this is your money house. This is how you earn your money. Um, this is also the area that governs your self-value, your self-worth, your material position, uh, possessions, um, your investments are also here. Now, Venus in the second house is great for business owners because this attracts a lot of customers and clientele to you. Uh, it makes your, your business more visible, more likable. Um, you can definitely see with uh, Venus coming into a second house money making opportunities coming to you so that by way of someone helping you giving you a money making opportunity or opportunity or a lot of money making um money making ideas come to you around this time um i i notice with me personally when i have venus transiting my second house i hear a lot back from old clients so you may hear from old clients you may want to consider reaching out to old clients to kind of like get them to come back. But this is a very easy way to make money uh, coming your way. Um, this is a good time to think about investments because this is an area that governs investments. So investing money, maybe you want to invest some more money in your, your 401k. Maybe you want to invest more in your stock market, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, you may get a return on something with regards to an investment. Um, this is also, um, again, the area that governs uh, your self-worth. Now, this is where I want my Aries Risings to utilize this energy to really take a look at how, what your relationship with money is. Um, people need to, don't realize we do have a relationship with money. And if you have an unhealthy relationship with money, an unhealthy dynamic with money, um, you will always be in, in financial crisis until you heal that. So Venus is there to help you with the healing of any adverse or negative or low vibrational type of relationship or attitude you have towards money. But this is also great for those of you that want to find a new job or if you have been looking for a, a, a job for an extended period of time, you definitely could have some type of blessing or some type of luck over interviews or the potential of hearing back about a, a job that you, um, 
applied for um, here recently or in the past. Now, your new moon is going to be highlighting your first house. So this is all about your physical body, how you're showing up. This is the house that governs your personal goals. These are not goals that have to do with anything of family, children, anybody else. These are your strictly your personal goals, your physical body, your identity, how you're showing up. So new moon is all about new energy, uh, planting new seeds of intention uh, for a new beginning. So Aries Rises, this is a great time for you to start working on a, any type of self-improvement process that you want for yourself. So if you wanted to decide that, okay, in the month of March, I'm going to start uh, my whole fitness goals, whatever those fitness goals are. This new moon energy is great for you, especially because it's going to be in Aries. And Aries is all about that starting of something new. It is like getting it going, being passionate and doing the work. So your fitness goals, your eating goals, um, you're going to change if you wanted to change up your style of dress or your style of hair. You want to put a fresh new perspective and a fresh new face on this new person that we're starting 2023 off with. So you get a lot of support and energy around that. This is going to be great for you to start to redefine or start pursuing those personal goals that you've had for yourself. Maybe, um, you know, those are the goals that you outline for yourself at the end of 2022. I'm going to do this, this, that, and the other. This is a great month for you to get those things started. Now, new moon in the first house. Is there a potential for love here? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I kind of consider the first house a little bit of a love house, just a little bit. So this is a fresh new beginning about you getting out and meeting new people uh, or you setting your attentions of you know, I want to be more social. I want to attract new people and new energy into my life. So this is going to be a great time for you to set your intentions for that. Now, your full moon, endings, adjustments, acknowledgments, or self-awareness around your, <laughs> your sixth house. Uh, again, health and fitness, mental and physical health. Uh, your work environment. So this is the, you know, where we actually do our work. Uh, and this is the people that we work with, around, and for. The sixth house is also the area that governs um, how we're of service to others and um, as I say, health, and the foods that we eat. So, endings, adjustments, acknowledgments around how we're addressing our health. You know, are we really, really taking care of ourselves? Do we need to let go of some bad habits that are adversely affecting our health? Um, so... You could be um, making decisions or discoveries or acknowledgments around um, the taking care of your mental and physical self, getting serious about your health, your physical body, your mental health, um, acknowledging that you, you know, you have some challenges around health uh, and that it needs to that need to be addressed. OK, I now I will tell you a full moon could have you discovered that there is a health issue going on with you. I hope that we can um, be more on the proactive side of this than the reactive side. But it could shed a light on poor health habits that have actually come back in a negative way. Now, your work environment is here also. Some of you could be deciding that it's time for you to move on from your current workspace or moving on from your current job. So you may be deciding that, you know what, um, my time is done here, so I want to look for a new job. I want to end this dynamic I have here at work. Now, this could also look like you um, leaving a position, not necessarily leaving the company, but leaving a position, maybe going on to some, some more responsibility within the, the company that you're in. But something about your work environment could change. Now, with a full moon, this could be someone leaving and because it's the moon, it's more feminine energy. So I don't like to put a gender on things, but I would probably go out and say that maybe there's a female co-worker. Um, maybe there's a female um, higher up that could possibly be leaving your your day-to-day -day work environment. Again, I don't like to put gender on it, but I don't know, maybe somebody with feminine energy or something like that. But that can be the ending of that. Um, maybe a coworker is leaving. 
uh, are turns in their two week notice and, and now your department is short staffed because that person is leaving. So there could be some changes in your work environment. And another thing I would also have you look at under this full moon is service to others. Now, <laughs> when we look at service to others in this area, you can kind of look at it a, two, a few ways. Of course, service to others would be volunteerism, like you are helping the less fortunate, volunteering your time, your money, uh, your efforts to a worthy cause or to, you know, a, an organization or the less fortunate. But service to all, others could also be someone in a caretaker capacity. So this could look like you may be a caretaker to a relative or a parent or a friend, and this could look like Maybe you're a healthcare provider or healthcare tech caretaker, or you are responsible for the um, care of someone's finances. Um, maybe they're in a, at a state in their life that they're no longer too able to take care of their own finances, and you become kind of like the person that's over that. Um, that could bring light or some attention towards um, the care of someone close to you, um, the care around others are less fortunate, or it could look like you really evaluating and taking a really good look at your reciprocal relationships because service to others also means um, are you giving more to others than you are receiving um, or vice versa? Are, are, are others showing up for you and you're not showing up for them? So some attention could be drawn on the imbalance in a, a relationship or a dynamic around who's showing up for who and who's not showing up for who. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right. I hope so. If not, let me know. I'll try to explain it more. Next, we're going to talk about Taurus rising sun or moon. Kelly, this is you. Um, the first three weeks of March are going to be highlighting, uh, the sun is going to be highlighting your social house, the 11th house. So this is uh, friends, acquaintances, organizations, and groups that you are a part of or thinking about becoming a part of. This is also the area that governs long-term goals, dreams, and wishes for yourself Unexpected blessings, unexpected gains, and unexpected money. So, for my Taurus rising, this could look like, number one, this is an area that governs your social life. So, my Taurus rises, I love. I know y'all love to be at home a lot, but this is a great first three weeks of March for you to get out and socialize, to be on the scene. We outside, me and honey, we outside. Um, reconnection with your friend groups. Um, maybe you are meeting new people, drawing new friends into your life. Uh, a lot of energy around and interactions around your friend groups and associates. Now, this could also have you taking a look at the organizations and groups that you're a part of or deciding you wanted to be a part of. So let's start looking at groups and organizations um, that we're interested in. Uh, if you're currently in a group or organization, maybe you just start, decide to take a more responsible role or you get more active in the group. This is also the area that governs long-term goals, dreams, and wishes. This is a great month for you to start really reassessing those long-term goals for yourself. You may find that you're adjusting them. Um, maybe some of the goals that you had for yourself, you decide that, you know, at this phase of my life, they are no longer important. And I want to set some new goals and aspirations for myself moving forward. But a lot of socializing, a lot of dealing with friends, organizations and groups. And um, this is also a technology house. So maybe this has energy around some of my Taurus Risings that are trying to launch a technology-based business, maybe a home-based business. Uh, maybe you guys are launching a website or an app, or maybe you're deciding to educate yourself in tech of some sort. But um, a lot of uh, things that have to do with um, social media and um, technology and the masses. This is like global reach because the 11th house is about the collective. And 
you know, getting yourself out within the group and the masses and not just yourself. Your Venus is going to be in your first house. Second place that I love Venus is in the first house because this is about the physical body. So when Venus goes to your first house, you are super, super magnetic. You will find during the month of March, people want to gravitate towards you. Um, no, you haven't missed yours. Um, gravitate towards you. Uh, be in your energy, bring you blessings, opportunities. A lot of blessings and opportunities come by way of Venus in the first house. Another thing that I notice with Venus transits the first house, we get a lot of love opportunities. Um, and there may be the potential of love coming into your life if you're single and you're open to that. And if you're in a relationship, maybe there's something that changes with regards to your love life during the month of March in a very positive way. But this energy just makes you more attractive, more magnetic. Um, and with you having that 11th house of social environment being lit up, I would say get out and be seen during the month of March, especially if you're single and you're looking to mingle and meet someone, this is the perfect combination for you to get out, socialize, and potentially bring love into your life. But you'll have a lot of opportunities and just a lot of blessings and things and people that want to be around you during this time. It's a very social time for Taurus Risings. I like that for you. Your new moon is going to be in your 12th house. Now, with the new moon in the 12th house, uh, this speaks to me on the level of um, working on something behind the scenes that you are not necessarily ready to share with the world. So <laughs> that could look like a project or something that is going on with you, whether it's a work project, a personal project or something that you're working on for, you know, just internally in yourself. But you're doing it behind the scenes and not necessarily sharing it with anyone. And it's not so much you want to keep it you know, secret or well, you kind of do, but um, you more or less feel like I want to start whatever this thing is, but I want to do it, you know, and keep it just for myself until I feel like I'm ready to share it with the world. Now, with all this love going on with y'all, I could possibly see someone, some of my Taurus Rising starting a romance um, in secret, okay? Uh, and deciding that, you know, I'm just kind of keep this under wraps until I know that this is going somewhere and then I'm ready to <laughs> um, share it with the world. OK, and again, this could also look like you just doing a lot of self-care, self-healing work, a lot of retrospect work. Um, I'm just still trying to work on my inner self for my to be my best self. And then when I feel like I'm ready to share, you know, my progress and what's going on with me a little bit later in the next few months. OK, um, your full moon is going to be highlighting your fifth house. Now, the fifth house has to do with children, um, our, your children, the children around you, uh, pregnancy. This is the area of house. This is the house of joy. One of my favorite houses. So the house of joy, where we take a risk. This is our children, procreation. This is the dating house. Okay. Now, seventh house is the relationship house. Fifth house is the dating house. Casual love affairs and casual sex. Full moon, ending adjustments and acknowledgements. So we may have some of my Taurus risings um, that are in a dating situation, finally deciding what direction this is going in. Uh, what are we doing here? Is the relationship going to go to the next level or do I feel like um, we need to go our separate ways? It's We've done all we can do and we got everything that we can get out of this relationship. And I think we just need to go our separate ways or are we taking this relationship to the next level? So, you know, a lot of information, a lot of talks around uh, what's going on by way of though, you know, uh, your, your dating life. So those of you that are dirt dating or have been dating for a while, um, I don't know, maybe the month of March, you was like, okay, let's do this thing. Are we not doing this thing? Um, this could also look like with a full moon acknowledging that, uh, maybe some of my single Taurus risings are now ready to end 
their singleness and decide to put themselves out and they start dating again. You know, putting themselves out again, being open to the dating process. Now, this could also look like um, someone discovering that they could possibly be pregnant or poss- they, are, they are pregnant, no possibility, either you're pregnant or you're not. So maybe some of my Taurus rising are discovering a pregnancy, announcing a pregnancy, whether it's their own or someone close to them. Um, this could also look like uh, Taurus rising deciding whether or not they want to bring children into their life or they are kind of like done with the whole children thing. And we ain't doing that anymore. And this is also the space of our creativity. So maybe you have been dealing, doing a creative project of some sort that is finally coming to culmination or coming to an end at this time. Um, and I think that is it. So notice, that's my Taurus rising. So the next is Gemini rising, sun or moon. The first three weeks of March, is the sun is going to be highlighting your 10th house of career. So the 10th house, your career, your public standing, your image, what you're known for, what you're known as, authority figures. Um, This is also the house of the father or masculine energy or prominent men in our lives. So a lot of attention going towards Gemini Rising, your career. So this could look like uh, recognition from higher ups for the work that you do. Uh, Some of you getting acknowledgments or accolades. Um, or um, someone noticing or acknowledging the work that you do in your profession. Um, this could also look like some of you deciding that you are ready for um, a change in your career, a change in your job. So you're like, you know, do I want to move up in this company? Do I want to stay where I'm at? Do I want to venture out? Do I want to start my own business? What is my standing or how am I feeling about my current career and the direction that it's going in? This is also the area that governs our public image. So this is how we're seen in the public, what we're known for, um, being acknowledged. Maybe you're a part of an organization and you are moving up the ranks in that organization. Um, You decide you want to take a more responsible role in the organization because some of everybody's not in the workforce so this could definitely look like something different for those of you that are no longer in the workforce is how you are showing up in your family dynamic or how you are showing up in your organizations or the groups that you put your that you are a part of you know again moving up in the ranks taking more responsibility in organizations taking more responsibility in your family uh in your friend groups So this is about how we're showing up in the public and what we're known for. This is also the area that that governs title changes. So I think some of my Gemini Risings with a title change, because this this is a relationship house, there could be some title changes with regards to relationships during the month of March. Could this look like an engagement? Could this look like a marriage? Absolutely. But could this look like a divorce or an ending of a relationship? Could be. So we could be, you know, dealing with dynamics around our titles changing. Now, your title could change in your career. So you go from um, being the person that works the drive through and now you shift leader at Mickey D's or something. I don't know. I always use that, that example because this is the easiest one for me to think of. But now you're not the drive through expert. You're like the shift leader or the key holder. So your title changes, something about your title changes during this time. And this could also be interactions, again, with authority figures, um, higher ups. Um, I'm going to caution my Gemini Risings not to get really aggressive um, out in public, (laughs) whereas they could have a a situation that brings in law enforcement because law enforcement here is in here in this particular area. And with the sun being there, that could just bring a whole different dynamic of what's going on with you. So I'm just going to leave that right there. Um, Your Venus is going to be in your 12th house. So again, the 12th house, we're talking about the 12th house a lot. Behind the scenes, self-care, uh, places of confinement. Now, with, with Venus being there, being the planet of love, money, and harmony, this really bodes for relationships started in secret. Okay, now let me tell you something about this Venus in the 12th house. Um, if you're a Gemini rising that 
meets someone during the month of March. I need you to be really, really diligent about vetting this person because Venus in the 12th house can sometimes draw to you people that are not fully available to you. And that could look like someone coming into your life that is in a relationship, um, someone coming into your life that may not be in a relationship, but is still emotionally attached to someone else. Um, and this could just basically bring on a damn affair. So I'm not here to judge. I don't, y'all do whatever y'all want to. But just be cautious on the, the dynamics around love during the month of March with this being in your 12th house. Just be cautious. That's that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, again, this is another one that's good about doing projects behind the scenes, making money behind the scenes. Like everything don't have to be loud. Everything that you're doing doesn't have to be shared with. You don't have to share it with everyone. So if you got some type of project, money making project opportunity or something that you're working on. Kind of keep it to yourself this month. This is not really not the month for you to be shouting into the world that, you know, I'm doing this, that, and the other. Just, you know, move in silence, okay? Move in silence. Um, your new moon is going to be in your 11th house, so this is going to spark your social life your or your, um, your interactions with your friend groups and associations. Some of you may want, uh, want to start to join certain groups and organizations, which would be a great time for you to do that now. Um, and then, uh, uh, again, uh, setting down your seeds of intentions for um, new goals, new aspirations, um, new dreams, new wishes and projects that you want to move forward for yourself in this area. Um, this new one also could bring My Gemini Rising some unexpected money or some unexpected opportunity by way of a friend or an organization also. Now, your full moon is going to be <coughs> in the sign, in the, in the fourth house. Endings, adjustments, acknowledgements around the fourth house. Now, the fourth house is about our actual physical space that we live in, our family, um, our roots, our emotional stability. Our mother is in this house. Uh, prominent women are there, feminine energy are there. Now, full moon. Some of my Gemini rising sun or moon may be contending with dynamics around your mother. Um, what this could possibly look like is um, her care with regards to her health, um, her mental health, her physical health, um, making final decisions around her long-term care. Especially if you are uh, a Gemini rising that has an elderly mo mother, the conversation could come up around this full moon about how she's going to be cared for in her golden years. Uh, maybe she's been living alone and it's coming to your attention that she can no longer live alone. So decisions around, you know, how do we take care of her as she's getting older? Um, this could also look like um, uh, the decision to move. There could be a move coming up for you. Uh, the talks of a move, uh, buying and selling a property, especially those of you that have been trying to sell a property for some time, you may actually see some movement in that direction. But this could definitely bring changes around your physical space, your physical dynamic, and what is going on with your family. Uh, a lot of decisions needing to be made, final decisions needing to be made about the care of certain family members in your life. And maybe the possibility or talks of um, the possibility of a move, maybe somebody moving in or out, or maybe purchasing a property or ending a lease of some sort. So Aries, Taurus, Gemini, does anyone have any questions with regards to those three signs? No. <laughs> okay. Um, next, we're going to be talking about um, Cancer rising sun or moon. The sun is going to be highlighting your ninth house, educational pursuits, long distance travel, um, your, your belief system, spirituality, religion, how you see the world. Um, 
I think in-laws are in this house too and grandchildren. So if you are a Cancer rising sun or moon, this could be um, energy around, talks around, attention around your educational pursuits. So some of you <laughs> going back to school, finishing up school, uh, trying to find a pick a, a <laughs> pick a um, what's the word? A major in school. Some of you coming to the realization that in, o <clears throat> in order for you to move forward in your career, you may need to educate yourself on something. Uh, this would be a great for those of you that have been thinking about uh, taking up a foreign language. This would be great for you to do that. Uh, long distance travel. Now, I consider long distance travel anything that you need a passport for. But I'm not just going to lump it into that. So this could be travel of any kind for my Cancer Rising. So some of you are taking a trip this month, planning a trip this month. Maybe a trip opportunity drops in your lap or you're just ready to vacation. So, and even if you can't vacation, um, the education of the research around different places that you want to go to maybe later on in the year could come up. <coughs> some of you may be contending with a citizenship type dynamic. So maybe you're trying to get citizenship in a certain country, dual citizenship, maybe a visa. Uh, maybe some of you are trying to get your passport, renewal of a passport. So those things could come up. Um, your belief system, renewal around your spirituality, what you believe in, needing to get back to the basics when it comes to your spiritual life and your connection with a higher power could come up for you. And I think this is the house that governs in-laws, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe some of you are content, cancer risers are contending with in-law dynamics. I think in-laws and grandparents are in this house. So we could be looking at that for my cancer risings. Now, your Venus is going to be highlighting your 11th house. So you're another one. This is a great time for you to socialize. You could... If you're a single cancer rising, meet the love of your life while out socializing. But you do have to come outside. And I don't know why people think that they can stay in the house and find love. But you got to come outside eventually. So cancer risings, this could be good for you to get out, socialize in the 11th house. Reconnecting with friends is great. Reconnecting with groups and organizations. Maybe you're ready to join a prof professional organization that you've been looking at. This is also great for online dating. Um, and those of you that like to do that, this is great for online dating. You actually may find someone that you connect with on there, but be careful. Always vet whether it's online or offline. Uh, Long-term goals, dreams, and wishes. And this is a great opportunity for Cancer Risings to come into a little bit of unexpected money um, with regards to this Venus being in the 11th house. But I would definitely use this for socializing reconnecting with your friend groups maybe some of you because this is tied to your friends could be developing a relationship with a friend like someone that you've been friends with for a long time and for whatever reason something sparks with the two of you <laughs> just a lottery money could be if that's very unexpected somebody says some lottery money could be but you got to play to win so maybe you connect with someone that is a friend and you just kind of looked at them as a friend for this, you know, a number of years. And all of a sudden now they look different. I don't know. Don't get alcohol involved with that because everybody looked different then. So but this could bring love with the friendship um, or the, fr the, 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 the the relationship starts off as a really good friendship and it develops to something else. But I want you to use this energy to get out and have a good time. Uh, cancer rising, your new moon is going to be in your 10th house, career, title changes, public image. This is great for you to restructure your career, new ambitions around your career. Now, you're another one that could be possibly seeing a promotion, <laughs> maybe some more responsibility in your current job, uh, maybe a change in your, your job. I think it's more so like a new beginning at your current job. Like, again, maybe you uh, applied for a, a new position or maybe a new position drops in your lap and something changes around uh, around that. And then, again, it could be some of you leaving your job for greener pastures or something that you want to do differently. 
whatever that looks like for you. Again, this is a relationship house. So some of you could be getting into a relationship. Um, new moon around the, 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 the renewal of your current relationship in some way. So uh, hopefully you guys let me know whether or not you get engaged or something like that. Uh, you can also let me know if you get divorced. You know, I, I'm here for you for that too. Um, but uh, changes around your career and your career opportunities are great for you to start manifesting for this month. And your full moon is going to be in your third house. Endings, adjustments, acknowledgements um, around uh, things that have to do with the third house. Your transportation, your car, short distance travel, your your siblings, your extended family. Um, this is also educational pursuits also. So maybe some of you are finishing up a course that you've been taking. Um, maybe some of you are um, contending with dynamics around your siblings, your cousins, your neighbors, um, relationship dynamics around that. Um, this is also your neighborhood. So some of you could be moving. Now, when I look at the third house and when I say a move, it's really not a big move. It's used typically a move where you move, but you kind of stay in the general area that you're already in. So you could be looking at a really short distance move or, or more activity around your neighborhood. Maybe you decide to be you campaign to be the president of the HOA or something like that. Or you start a new beautification process in your neighborhood. Or maybe you get new neighbors of some sort. So something around the dynamics of your neighborhood could be changing. And this is great for short distance trips. So I always equate short distance trips to, you know, in your region, in your area, and a lot of road trips. So, um, yeah, that, that could be something that comes up for you. Okay? Now... Leo rising sun or moon, that is my rising sign. And anybody else that's a Leo rising on here, raise your hand if you're a Leo rising. This is how your month of March is going to look. First three weeks of March, the sun is going to be highlighting your eighth house. Other people's money, other people's resources, uh, taxes, inheritances, monies that, oh, you're, oh yes, monies or opportunities or resources that you receive not through the efforts of your own. This has nothing to do with your earnings that you do individually. This is all about somebody else. So this is money from your spouse, uh, your business partner. This is uh, inheritances, taxes, insurance settlements, payouts. This is also the area that governs sex and intimacy. Hallelujah. So <laughs> the sun will be highlighting that for you. So we are entering tax season. Leo rising, you need to start to pay attention to your taxes. Maybe some of my Leo risings probably need to um, go ahead and get a tax person this year because you may be missing the full benefit of all the uh, benefits through your taxes. So you may be thinking about getting a tax person this year instead of doing it yourself. So you could be getting a larger refund. Uh, could this be an audit? Maybe. I don't know. But let's think about um, making sure we are paying attention to our taxes, gather our receipts, deductions and all of that. <laughs> this is also uh, energy around inheritances, paying attention to that. Uh, you could be hearing information with regards to a settlement or monies that you've been waiting on from other people. Because remember, this is also child support, alimony things of that nature. But what this really is good for is getting um, um, a focus on your debt and debt management. This is, and, and, and this is going to be piggyback with Saturn going into that eighth house. You, Leo Risings are about to get a hard lesson in uh, managing their finances, getting serious about uh, their debt, getting serious about their long-term investments, um, um, how they're doing their money is going to come up over the next couple of years and it's going to start this month. So start to pay attention on what is going in and out financially. Um, also, if you are coupled with someone or if you share monies or resources with someone else, you really need to get serious about paying attention on how your partner does money. Um, 
Is it being done responsibly? Are you guys on the same page when it comes to how you pay bills, how you save, how you spend? Everybody needs to be on the same page moving forward here, Leo Rising. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Now, sex and intimacy. This could be for whether you're single or coupled up. Um, an attention or a renewal around your sex life. Um, so if you ain't been getting none, you may start getting some. Uh, if you have been getting some, you may want to start to experiment. You're a little bit open to experimentation. And this is also the area that governs intimacies. So this is all about sex is one thing. Sex is the physical act. But intimacy is the connection with someone else. So if there has been strains around your intimate connection, particularly with your partner. Now, remember, intimacy can be in any relationship. So let's just not, you know, focus it on romantic. So it can be intimacy with anyone. But, you know, if your intimate connections, whatever that looked like for you, have been strained or they have been disconnected or you don't feel like you are in touch with the other person, the month of March could assist you in bringing that connection back to you. Okay, definitely with that. And again, this is the area that governs sex. And You know, your girl loves a good roll in the hay. So this could spark some good sex for this month. If we can't get intimacy, can we just at least get some good sex? Good Lord. Venus is going to be highlighting your 10th house. Perfect. I love Venus in the 10th house. Um, career opportunities. This makes you very, very favorable to hire us. So what I find with Venus in the 10th house, you start to get a lot of accolades and a lot of praise for the work that you do. Now, does that mean you get some more money? Huh, could be. But... A lot of times, it's just a lot of recognition around uh, how you do your job, how you show up, your work ethic, you know, people praising you on, you know, how you, you know, present. And, and then a lot of times, um, if you have a certain position in an organization, you know, you're getting a lot of praise, maybe an award or an acknowledgement of the work that you do in your community, in your organization, at work. Uh, some kind of acknowledgement. Now, Venus does govern money. Uh, could there be a bonus or a raise from some of my Leo Risings? Absolutely. That could come along with that. But this is a more or less a lot, a lot of accolades around how you show up in your work, in your organizations, and even in your family and in your community. So you could be looking at something like that. Now, Venus uh, here could bring love your way, but it could bring love in a way sometimes through love through a coworker or you meet them at your job or you meet them at some type of uh, professional organization or something to that effect. Uh, Venus in the first house could definitely bring a commitment because the 10th house is like the house of commitment, like a serious commitment. So some of my Leo risings, uh, and this is a year, this is a next couple of years is a year of love for us, could be getting engaged. Um, there could be uh, maybe an engagement or maybe a profession of love from someone or you professing your love to someone to solidify a serious commitment or connection with someone. I'm just saying. And, um, your new moon is going to be in your ninth house. Um, you're another one that's it's really kind of set for travel during this month. Uh, whatever travel looks like for you. Educational pursuits. Me, myself, I'm starting my Spanish back again. But so maybe you're deciding you're ready to go back to school again because you're in a in a good space to go to school right now. So going back to school, maybe learning a foreign language, maybe doing a little traveling or planning for a little traveling. And it's funny because I was reminiscing about the cruise that I took a few years ago. And I was talking about, I really want to take another cruise and I want to take my mom with me. So, you know, things like that come up for you. You're deciding, you know, you want to plan for a trip maybe now or a few months down the line with regards to this ninth house, educational pursuits and a renewal of your faith comes up with this, the renewal of your faith and your spirituality and how you just see life gets a little bit better for you. Now, your full moon is going to be highlighting your second house. Could this be an end to a stream of income? Yes, it could. But I always think that an ending is an opportunity for a new beginning. So Leo Rising, if you find a stream of income ending for you, please do not fret. There is more than likely 
a new stream of income coming your way, whether or not it's something that you go out and get for yourself or the opportunity drops into your lap. Um, this is also ties into that eighth house that we're talking about, you getting serious about debt management because this is the second house and the full moon is about endings, adjustments, acknowledgements. This is acknowledging how do you spend your money? <laughs> you know, how, because the money that you're earning in the second house, how is it being spent? Are you being responsible? Are you keeping up with all your purchases? So changing how you do money, getting more a little bit more mature with it, getting a little bit more serious about it, um, and building wealth, building a nest egg, building security for yourself financially could come up for you with that. That's my Leo rising. Virgo rising, sun or moon. The first three weeks of March are going to be highlighting your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships. And I know a Virgo rising. And one-on-one -on -one relationships, business, family, friends, marriage, long-term committed relationships, um, those conscious chosen relationships we go into with another person. And this is also the area that governs uh, legal and binding agreements. So a lot of attention to your one-on-one -on -one relationships and how you've been operating with one-on-one -on -one relationships. Could there be some issues that come up yes there could be but that's an effort for you to um take them seriously do the work with regards to your one-on-one -on -one relationships um so and this could also look like for my marital people are we how are we operating in conjunction or connection with the other person in our life so a lot of work and a lot of attention around your one-on-one -on -one relationships and how you're showing up in your one-on-one -on -one relationships could come into focus for my um, Virgo risings for the first three weeks of March. Your Venus is going to be lit up in your ninth house, long-distance travel, educational pursuits, in-laws, grandparents, I think grandchildren. Grandchildren are here, uh, your belief system. Um, so you're another one. It'd be a great time for you to go back to school. Also educating yourself on something and, and don't always think that I want to say this. Um, don't always think that the ninth house is just formal education. Like you got to go to school or something like that. It is, but this is also about just educating yourself. Even if you want to do self study on certain things. So you don't always have to be at a university or college or some kind of formal, you know, educational um, program. This could be about educating yourself through uh, your own self-study, through travel, through reading, whatever that looks like for you. You're another one that um, should be tapping back into their spiritual life. So if, if you're a Virgo rising that has gotten away from your faith and you're starting to feel the disconnect this March is going to be a great time for you to return it. And I think you're just going to have a natural gravitational pull towards getting back to your faith and renewing in what you believe in. Um, your new moon is going to be in your eighth house around your, um, take that back, other people's money, other people's resources, debt, um, insurance settlements, things gains, monies, resources we get through another person or another entity. Um, I would say for my Virgo rises, this would be a great opportunity if you need to go to financial institutions, banks, credit unions, whatever that looks like, to um, get a loan or financing or personal loan for a house, a car, <coughs> educational pursuits. This would be a great great month for you to do that if that's something that you've been thinking about doing. doing. I would say do it now because I think we have a Mercury retrograde coming up in April and I don't think that's a good time for you to do it then. And if you wait, if you don't do it now, you probably have to wait until the end of May. But if that's been something that you've been focused on or been thinking about, the March is a good time for you to go and do that. <laughs> Paying attention also to your taxes and how you interact with someone else with regards to uh, the financial dynamics with regards to a relationship, whether it be marriage, business, or a long-term committed relationship. Um, also, sex <laughs> sex and intimacy are here. So this is new beginnings. This is a relationship house. I'm thinking some of my Virgo risings, especially my single ones, could be developing some type of intimate connection with someone. 
Um, not just about sex, but on a deep, intimate level. So I would not be surprised if I hear some of my Virgo rising clients, maybe sun or moon, but more like my rising clients, um, getting connected on an intimate level with someone at this time. And your full moon <laughs> is going to be in your first house. Endings and adjustments, acknowledgments around your physical self. So uh, this could look like the ending of a personal project that you've had for yourself coming to culmination. Or are you putting it to bed like it no longer works for you and you want to direct your attention to something else? This could also look like because this is your physical body, how you've been taking care of your physical body. Um, this could also look like those Virgo Risings that may have been having a, a health issue or been in some type of treatment. <coughs> I'm sorry, been in some type of treatment for a health condition could possibly be coming to an end. There's a resolution that could be coming up very, very soon around any type of physical ailment or physical dynamic or um, medical procedure or whatever you've been doing could be coming to an end for the month of March. And so we have Cancer Rising, Leo Rising, Virgo Rising. Does anyone have a question around those three? Libra rising, sun or moon. The sun is going to be the first three weeks highlighting your sixth house. Attention to your health, mental and physical health, the foods that you eat. So some of my Leo risings may be considering a major dietary change. So this is more, less of a diet, more of a lifestyle change. So changing up the foods that you eat. So eliminating certain foods from your diet, going to a different eating plan. Maybe you're going to be intermittent fasting. Um, maybe you're going to be becoming a vegetarian, a vegan. Something changes about how, or needs to change. Hey girl, uh, change about your dietary uh, needs and how you eat. Uh, this is also uh, energy around the, the possibly... Uh, uh, addressing health, how you take care of your health, mental and physical health. Your work environment could pick up, could get really, really busy during this time with the sun being there. So you could be busy. Maybe you, if you're self-employed, you have new clients coming in. Uh, maybe you are just having an increased workload. So your environment gets really busy. Changes around your work environment could be coming up from my Leo rising sun or moon. So let's pay attention to that. Your Venus is going to be highlighting your eighth house. So Venus in your eighth house, um, sparking um, unexpected money. I love this. So this could be money coming from different sources. So maybe child support, maybe alimony. You get a big fat tax refund. An insurance settlement finally plays out, pays out. And legal rising, if it's not you, it could be someone that you're partnered with. Because remember, this is other people's money. So this could be your spouse maybe benefiting financially. And of course, if your spouse benefits financially, your money, his, their money is your money. So it trickles down to you. This could be your business partner. Maybe business is going well. Um, but I love Venus in the eighth house because somebody's going to get some kind of financial benefit or something or opportunity coming their way. And with Venus being there, and this is sex and intimacy, this is all about reconnecting with your your spouse, your uh, your long-term committed partner, the fine-ass dude to live down the street. Hey, whatever. But um, this this is all about you, um, your sex life possibly picking up, um, and your your intimacy changing maybe in your relationship and it getting closer. Uh, this is a great time to try to introduce, you know, different things in the bedroom because your partner will be more open to the possibility of trying something new. So I'm going to just give you that one, Libra Rising. Um, your new moon is going to be in your seventh house. Speaking of partners, one-on-one -on -one relationships, how we do relationships, new beginnings there. So connections with marriage or spouse, business partner, um, family, friends, business connections, so new opportunities for there. So if you're looking for uh, a new business partner or are you looking for a new vendor or you're looking for a new doctor, this is going to be the month that you could potentially find the person that is the perfect fit that meets your needs for whatever that thing is that you need them for. 
So you may be looking for a new therapist and you find the perfect therapist for you. Or you're looking for a new landscaper for your, your yard and you find the perfect perfect landscaper. So something like that could come up. Um, and then new beginnings around your relationships. Maybe your marriage, your, 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 your long-term committed relationship that you're in. Something around that changes. Your full moon is going to be highlighting your 12th house. So... Projects and works that you've been doing behind the scenes could be coming to an end and you're ready to introduce those things to the world. Now, remember, the 12th house is um, in the full moon. My Libra rising could be privileged to some information that has been withheld from them. Now, I can't say whether it's positive or negative. I don't know what that is, but you could be on the receiving end on of some information that could have been withheld for you for withheld from you for whatever reason and it's just now coming to light and this could be the vice versa if there's something that you've been keeping to yourself don't know what it could be but it could be um exposed in some way uh this month whether it's something that you announce yourself or someone discovers not my business don't know what that is um and uh places of confinement hospitals uh rehab centers prisons you could be hearing from someone um in one of those settings that could be entering or getting out of one of those settings scorpio rising sun or moon the sun is going to be the first three weeks of march is going to be highlighting your fifth house the house of joy procreation children our creative projects and where we take a risk. Buy a lottery ticket, Scorpio Rising. Buy a lottery ticket. You never know what could happen. But this could be highlighting attention around your dating life. So your casual relationships, you're another one that could be if you're in a casual dating situation or a serious dating situation, maybe the, the conversation of where the relationship is going comes up. Maybe there's an ending to it. Um, this could also highlight those of you that are single uh, new dating opportunities coming into your life. That could be a thing for you. And a little bit of casual sex. Nothing wrong with that. Um, some of you may be um, announcing that you are expecting a baby. Or someone close to you is expecting a baby and makes an announcement. Or you're deciding that you're ready to start your family. Uh, or you've decided that, well, we had our last baby and I'm done with that. Whatever that looks like for you. And uh, your creative projects could be highlighted. So your creativity is going to be on fire for the month of March. Do not stifle it. Uh, embrace it and put your energy into those hobbies, those crafts, those things that bring you joy. Uh, that could turn into some kind of money-making opportunity for you. You know, I'm always trying to exploit people's talents, whatever. Uh, buy a lottery ticket, Scorpio Rising. You never know. Um now, your Venus is going to be highlighting your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships. This makes our one-on-one -on -one relationships more harmonious, more connected to other people. Just don't think romantic, but it could be. It could be your husband, I mean, your spouse, your long-term committed partner, your business partner, family, friends. So Venus brings a lot of harmony with that. Now, one thing I love about Venus in the seventh house, this is a great opportunity to make money with a partner. So you could be in a business partnership and money-making opportunities come your way. Um, you could be one of those that wants to start up a business with their spouse or work with their spouse in some way. Somehow making money together in conjunction with someone else is going to be of a benefit to my Scorpio Risings for the month of March. So don't, you know, don't turn down any type of partnerships that come your way. You know, investigate them. It may be some money in that for you. Uh, your new moon is going to be highlighting your sixth house, health and fitness, work environment, the foods that we eat, service to others. So new beginnings, um, new attention to uh, a new course of action around our health. Scorpio rising, your health, your fitness, your mental health, uh, maybe something new with regards to the work environment. Maybe a new work opportunity comes up for you or maybe a new... Um, a position comes up to comes up for you that you want to pay attention to or apply for or research on but there could be some changes around um your work environment um that could be uh, very beneficial to you um and new for you 
Hmm, I wonder what that is. Um, but let's pay attention to our food that we eat, how we're eating, what we're eating, and um, taking care of our health more. Now, your full moon is going to highlight your 11th house. Now, endings, adjustments, and acknowledgements around your friend groups. So, could this be an ending of a friendship? You've been thinking about a new venture with the hubby. Perfect time to think about it. Think about it. Um, now, Scorpio Risings, this could be an ending adjustment or acknowledgement around your, your friendships or your friend groups or your associates that you uh, have around you or any type of organization that you're a part of. Could this be an ending of certain friendships? Absolutely. Um, it could be a full out ending. It could also be an ending on how the relationship works or how the friendship dynamic works. Maybe there is something that needs to change and how you two operate as friends or how the group operates as friends. Um, this could be you leaving a group or, or, or an organization, or this could be you possibly stepping down in a role that you had in a group or an organization uh, for yourself. Um, Long-term goals, dreams, and wishes are here. Maybe something that you've had um, as a goal or a dream or a wish for yourself actually either comes to fruition or starts to show some movement. Or you could be just getting rid of all those what you consider outdated goals for yourself and start to implement new goals at this new phase in your life. Okay? That could be what comes up for you with that 11th house. So Sagittarius rising sun and moon. This is my niece's rising sign and she ain't even on here, but that's okay. <coughs> the sun is highlighting <coughs> the first three weeks. Your fourth house home, real estate, uh, the people that we live with, our family, um, the women uh, in our lives, prominent women in our life, our mothers. So we, we got attention on your, 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 living situation so some of you could be moving needing to move uh finding a new place to move something changing maybe somebody's moving in and out there could be changes in your household um dynamics around how you interact or interactions with the women in your family so um i would say if you still have your mother maybe you want to pay a little bit more attention to her give a little bit more time to her uh sagittarius rising <clears throat> but somehow your emotional stability could be challenged during this month. You know, maybe you have an extreme highs and lows in your moods um, over the next three weeks. So just be mindful of that. But this could be, like I said, activity, energy changes around your home life. Now, Venus will be in your sixth house. So health and fitness, foods that we eat, your work environment. Uh, this would be a great time for you to start looking for a job or some of my Sagittarius Risings could be hearing about a job opportunity coming their way. Maybe a promotion, a new job, a change in jobs, uh, something to that effect. The work environment gets a little bit easier for you. Maybe you get a little bit of a raise. So there could be some changes around that. Um, and your new moon is going to be in your fifth house. Now, new beginnings, opportunities in this area of the fifth house could this bring up a pregnancy yes it could so if you are not trying to have a baby get pregnant during this time i would strongly suggest that you protect yourself because that could be a thing for you and some for some of you it's already too late so i'm just to let y'all know it's already too late so you're probably going to be discovering and announcing that you are expecting a baby or maybe it's somebody close to you. If you are out of childbearing years, this could be somebody close to you. Maybe some of y'all are becoming grandparents for the first time or for the 10th time, whatever that looks like. But a pregnancy could come up or a discussion around pregnancy could come up. Uh, new beginnings um, with your children. So this could look like children hitting milestones or having new opportunities coming their way. <clears throat> and you're able to experience those things with them, which is a good thing. And uh, you're another one that I would say it wouldn't hurt for you to go to bingo or 
lottery or the casino wouldn't help or wouldn't hurt. Now I wouldn't say spend a lot of money, but don't get down there and lose all your money and say, I told you to do it now. Gamble wisely, you know, be responsible, but you, you could possibly have a little luck in that area. Now the full moon is going to be highlighting your 10th house. Could this be the end of a job? Yes, it could. But what do I always say? Endings are an opportunity for new beginnings. So we could be getting new jobs, um, new position, new opportunity. Maybe you deciding, you know, I don't want to work for anyone anymore. I think it's time for me to start my business. <clears throat> Remember I told you Aries season. Aries is the sign of the entrepreneur. So you may be feeling like it's time for me to work for myself and start my business. This, this could be a great time for you. Okay. Um, Capricorn rising, sun or moon. Do I have a Capricorn rising? Do I know anybody with that sign? I don't think so. Sun, the first three weeks of March is going to be highlighting your third house of communication, transportation, siblings, neighbors, your neighborhood, <coughs> and short distance travel. So, Uh, attention, increased attention, interaction with your siblings, cousins, neighbors, uh, a lot of road trips, possibly some short distance travel for you. This is a great time for you to do short distance travel. Uh, changes in your neighborhood could be highlighted. Maybe some of you are going to be moving. Um, there's a small possibility for that. Changing of your neighborhood dynamics. Um, this could also look like you... I don't know if you're necessarily going to need to get a new car or maybe you start to think about or research the possibility of getting a new vehicle or you decide that you kind of need to put some work into your current vehicle to get it up to par. But transportation um, changes are, could be coming your way um, with this, this, um, this sun in the, in the third house. And, you know, it's nice to get away. Just a little short distance travel could be good for you, too. Now, your Venus is going to be in your fifth house of dating. So some of you could definitely be having some dating opportunities coming up for you because it's the house of dating and casual sex. Your sex life definitely could increase. That's a good thing. Um, but dating opportunities could come up. The, the relationship that you're in could be taking on a new dynamic in a positive way. You're another one that could be uh, you got a lot of support around starting a family. Again, if you don't want to start one, be careful because that could come up for you or hearing about someone starting a family, something to that effect. Venus is the planet of money and um, yeah, money. Uh, you're another one that I would say could probably do well um, with um, maybe a trip to casino, maybe bingo. Or maybe some money kind of like comes to you unexpectedly. That could, that could do that. Um, and this would be a great time for you to turn a passion project into a business. So stop giving away your gifts and start charging for them. Your new moon is going to be in your fourth house. Family, real estate, property, emotional stability. You another one that could be either doing... Um, a uh, redecorating, uh, renovating, buying and selling property. Maybe you're getting ready to buy your first home. You're getting ready to move, finding a new apartment, whatever that looks like for you. But something about a new beginning around your home life. Now, could this look like uh, a relationship kind of new beginning? It could. It could. Um, Capricorn rising, sun and moon. You, you're one of those that could be thinking about a new beginning around family. So, um, yeah, that, that could be something that you're thinking about. You're ready to start a family. Maybe you're ready to get married. Maybe you're ready to have a baby or whatever that looks like. But a new beginning around your family dynamic. And this, again, could look like a new place, a, new, a move for you or some kind of changes in your current household. Your full moon is going to be endings, adjustments, acknowledgments around your ninth house, which could be completion with educational pursuits. Um Long distance travel could come up for you. Maybe you guys are going are in the tail end of an immigration or citizenship type dynamic. Maybe your passport comes back, you applied for it, and it finally comes back this month. Um, 
but uh, long distance travel, educational pursuits, and um, this also with this full moon could be a shift in your your beliefs or your religious beliefs or things that you've held as a a long time belief system or something that you believed in for a long time may start to change for you and you kind of see it differently. Just watch how that plays out over the next six months around how you see the world and what you know to be true could be changing um, based on your experiences of, you know, since the last few years up until now. I think all of us have changed our belief system, but that could be highlighted for you for this month, Capricorn Rising. Aquarius Rising, Sun or Moon. The Sun is going to highlight your second house of earned income, personal possessions, material possessions, um, our self-worth and value. So Aquarius Rising, let's take a look at how you earn your money. Um, and particularly how you earn your money in a way that do you feel like what you do and how you earn your money is a value. Um, are you doing something that you truly believe in or are you just showing up for a check? Okay. Uh, maybe you start to reflect on this kind of work that I do. I just don't know that I feel like, you know, it brings any kind of joy to me. I don't feel like I'm helping others. I just don't feel like I'm just doing anything with this. And you start to possibly reevaluate your purpose around your earnings like and how you earn your money and maybe position. That's funny. I feel that way with my North Node and Aquarius right now. Yeah. Like do well, you know, what is my purpose here? Am I just showing up for a check or do I really believe in what I'm doing? You know, is the company that I'm working for do, do my values and what, and this company's values, do they align? You know, do I still want to be here? So trying to finding meaning and purpose in how you earn your money could come up. You know, a lot of times this kind of prompts a person to start their own business. And funny enough, my brother was talking about that. Uh, I, somebody close to me was talking about starting their own business and, and not working, uh, it, leaving the workforce probably in the next five years, which is crazy. And that person is an Aquarius son. So this will have you very reflective on how you earn your money. Now, your Venus is going to be highlighting your fourth house, home, family, um, real estate, property, things of that nature. Some of my Aquarius risings are going to be thinking about buying and selling property, uh, additional property. Um, maybe they decided they're ready to be a real estate mogul and they're going to start buying and selling, flipping houses, whatever this looks like. This could also look like a total renovation or redecoration project for an Aquarius rising. So maybe they're just sprucing up their current abode. Um, this is another one that could be people moving in or out. Now, Venus in the, the fourth house, your mother, if your mother's still with you, and maybe if she's not still with you, maybe some kind of financial benefit comes through your mother or some prominent woman in your life or around your life. Um, has some kind of financial blessing that comes through from them to you that benefits you. Let me know how that works out, Aquarius Rising. Your new moon is going to be around your third house. Transportation, siblings, cousins, neighbors, your neighborhood. Um, educational pursuits. Uh, Aquarius Rising, some of you may be deciding to go to school. Now, when I look at the third house in educational pursuits, this is not like, um, I would say, college type educational pursuits that is like takes a long time. This is more like vocational type. So this is like courses that you take that are no more than like six months to a year. And they're like accreditations, certifications, uh, vocational type education. A lot of this is like if you are in a certain profession and in order for you to move up or in order for you to get an, a raise of some sort, you have to get another certification. So it's kind of like educational pursuits like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could be looking at something like that. Maybe some of you are going to deal with uh, the potential for transportation changes or needing to get new transportation or at least invest some money in your current mode of transportation. And 
Uh, interactions, new beginnings around your siblings, cousins, or neighbors. So maybe you guys are reinventing your relationship, spending more time, being in more contact with each other, which is always a good thing, Aquarius Rising. And your full moon is going to be highlighting your eighth house, uh, other people's money, other people's resources. So you're another one that really basically needs to get serious about how you do um money and resources in partnership with another person getting getting serious about your budget getting serious about how you're spending money whether it's you your partner or how you do it together um maybe starting a business with a partner or a spouse of some sort um th that could be something that comes up for you or you start to think about or maybe the two of you are dissolving a business you're thinking about selling a business you want to do away with that. And the two of you are going to start something new together. And finally, Pisces, sun, moon, are rising. I have a Pisces rising close to me. The sun is going to be highlighting the first three weeks of the month, uh, your first house, all about your physical body. So we're going to be paying attention to that. Now, the sun in the first house can make you very tired, can make you feel kind of run down. So do not like run yourself in the ground. Be very, very mindful about running yourself in the ground. So taking care of yourself, um, spotlighting your physical body, how you take care of yourself, the things um, and getting yourself in shape, changing your energy and changing your energy is a big deal and how you're showing up differently and how people are experiencing you. Your Venus is going to be in your third house. So um, again, um, I think most of my Pisces risings are, have already had their move or they have the move and they're, they're doing, they're in the redecorating. Well, they're in a new neighborhood. So this is a quick move for my Venus risings, probably a new neighborhood, new neighbors getting acquainted with their new neighbors. Um, maybe there's some talks of a new vehicle. Um, maybe you're spending more time with um, your siblings, cousins, neighbors, something to that effect. Educational pursuits could come up during this time with Venus. Um, so we're looking at that. Your new moon is going to be highlighting your second house, a new stream of income. So maybe a new stream of income coming your way. Second house is how you earn your money, your self-value, your material possessions, um, Pisces rising. So let's talk about how you earn your money. Is it time for you to branch out, get a new job, get a second job? Ask for a raise is a good one. Ask for a raise during this time. And then your full moon is going to be highlighting your seventh house one-on-one -on -one relationships, friends, family, uh, marriage, long-term committed relationship, business, legal contracts. So we're looking at how you're doing your one-on-one -on -one relationships um, are some of those relationships still viable? Do they still need to be in your life or do they need to be, you know, you need to end those or do they need to be adjusted in some sort? Remember, the full moon is about adjustments, and acknowledgements, especially acknowledgements is, you know, we need to if there's an issue, we need to acknowledge it at least. So Pisces Rising is looking at the dynamics of your relationship, acknowledging that they need some kind of work or repair. And what do we move forward doing next with that? So that is how the month of March is going to pan out for all my rising signs. Does anyone have any uh, questions about that? Or comments or input? I went a little bit over than I intended to, but that's okay. 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 So that's the end of the live. Now, like I said, March is a really, really big month. There is a lot of um, astrological movement that I didn't talk about. Because it really needs to be done in a one-on-one -on -one reading. So if you are interested in getting a one-on-one -on -one reading, always visit me at my website, www.melanangoddesslife.biz. Um, did you get any in any rituals this past weekend with the Pisces? You know what? I didn't get into any rituals per se, but I had a lot of like 
internal reflection that I was doing over this past week. Um, and for some reason, I got up this morning and my mindset was totally, totally different. Like, I was more energy. I did a lot of fasting over this last two weeks and that definitely helped. So um, each day I did a 20 hour fast. And I tell you, the clarity on that was phenomenal. Like the clarity about a lot of things was so phenomenal for me. So I could I could say that. And I lost eight pounds. Look at God. <laughs> I lost eight pounds. So um, I'm still on my fast. Um, um, I did a 16-hour fast today. And I'll go back to my 20-hour fast. So I do a 20-hour fast Monday through Saturday and a 16-hour fast on Sunday. So um, I'll be back on the 20-hour fast tomorrow. But it has been phenomenal. Perfect. Yeah. So, oh, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome, Tara. So if, like I said, there is going to be a lot of just phenomenal movement starting in the month of March, starting in the month of May. You guys really need to get a personal reading to figure out where where your individual energy is going to be because we are going to be working with some great great energy f for this entire year 2023 and going into 2024 and I do not want you guys to miss the opportunity and what's coming up for you. So if you want a personal reading with me www.melaniegoddesslife.biz um, I'm only doing readings two days out of this month so far. I think the 8th and the 20th. And, uh, of course, the mini readings are, are still available. I will post those uh, once I get off the live. If you just want to do the mini reading, that's just as good. So, you know, in the mini reading, we talk about the theme of your year. So what is going to be highlighted for you for your, your theme of your year, birthday to birthday, and if you're interested in knowing when your love life is going to go through a transition or change. Now, keep in mind, the love life thing, it goes for people that are in relationships, too. Because I think people think I'm only talking about someone that's single and someone finally getting into a relationship. No, this is for people that are in relationships. Because guess what? Relationships go through transitions. So we're also talking about you guys when you can anticipate a transition or a change that could have that can happen in your long-term committed relationship or your marriage. This is not just for single people. So if you want to take advantage of that for you also, we could do that. And uh, again, I'll post uh, how to do the mini reading and you just visit the website to schedule your, um, your detailed reading through the website. So thank you so much for showing up. I know I've been incognito here the last couple of weeks um uh, but i've been on uh again like my spiritual fast i've been doing kind of like doing some spiritual stuff for myself getting some clarity for myself so i had to take a little time off but i am back so um i appreciate you guys showing up you great you guys have a great rest of your evening and a great week and i will talk to you in the next video bye bye